Okay, welcome to the Let's Play of Puzzle Agent 1. Dum dum dum. This is gonna be my first Let's Play ever, so please bear with me. I was actually hoping to do this with someone else, but I'm alone. So, let's start a new game here. I love the animations in this game. There was something about Sasquatch research? There was something about turkeys too, I noticed that. The US Department of Puzzle Research. Okay, astronomers note new moon. That took them long. This is actually one of the weird things about this game. This this game actually sometimes scares me. There's a sequence later on where there's like you discover a character and suddenly there's a scream and it spooks the shit out of me. I suck at scary games. And again, I can consider this scary, so that just proves how much I suck. that please let me not sleep next to someone else <laughs> yay first puzzle okay so this is just like picking up things and putting them together uh, let's see I'm getting lucky right now <laughs> I love that it costs seventy-five and a half thousand dollars for just an FBI agent to put together a broken crossword puzzle. Which she broke, by the way. Like, the taxpayers, if you're out there, be mad. Be very mad. What's up with the spider? Uh, puzzle research. This is Agent Tethers. I, I think you have the wrong number. Oh, I see. A an assignment. In the field? No, no, sir, it's it's just, it's been, yes, quite some time. Uh-huh. Erasers? The foundation of democracy? Oh, absolutely, sir. I agree, sir. Oh, yes, the White House needs its erasers, sir. Of course it does. I'll be on the next plane to... Wait, where? Dum, dum, dum. Welcome to Scorgans, Minnesota. Again, for some reason, the animations in this game is like horrible, but I still love them. For some reason. It's very weird. I think also one thing that speaks to me in this game is like the whole Scandinavian culture thing that apparently goes on in Minnesota because I've never been to America so bear with me when I try to be like stereotypical. Just arrived in Scoggins, Minnesota. Population 754. Temperature mm, It's cold and not much to look at. According to the agency, there's some kind of situ incident thing going on at the local eraser factory. Clusterfuck would have been better. Down. There's a weird man staring at me. Hopefully, this won't be a big waste of time. 
Okay, if this was like the Blair Witch Project, out. they would be like find a cassette recorder with him saying, "There's a weird man staring at me." I have no idea where my hotel is. I might have to ask for directions. Talk to the creepy man. See, any any games that starts this way should have like a Peggy 18 rating because you just know that if they like advise people to talk to a creepy Excuse man. Me? I'm Fuck. Nelson Tethers with the FBI's Department of Puzzle Research. Hello? Yep. Okay, and you are? Bjorn. Bjorn? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Mr. Bjorn. Boy, those snowmobiles sure are a bumpy ride, eh? Yeah. <laughs> You're a man of few words, Bjorn. I like that. Can you give me directions to the nearest hotel? I'm having a little trouble finding my way around. You'd never get there. The roads are too slick. Sir, I'm an agent of the FBI's Puzzle Research Division. It can't be harder than the puzzles I see every day. Not so. It's really just a, a matter of trajection. Okay, okay city slickers. On to the hotel, you're going to pass two traffic lights. Okay, another puzzle. Slowmobiles starting along the roads. Arrange the locks to help Nelson bump his way to the hotel. Make sure to pass the traffic lights Bjorn mentioned along the way. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I don't want to read this. It's like, it, it's self-explanatory. For some reason, because you you just think that if you're on a snowmobile, you don't want locks to make sh to, to like fight, figure out where you're going. So let's see. Going there. Trajectory. Submit. Because that's definitely the way you want to turn. And also, like, how lucky do you have to be for everything to be green in those lights, light crossings? This game could have ended early if it had just been a red light and you were being smashed by another snowmobile, like, driving into locks. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. Top agent. Suck it, bitches! Hmm. As they say in th South Park, meet Bjorn. He's a dick. Um, I must have gotten lost. I thought your directions were taking me to the hotel. They did. Uh... I'm standing in front of the hotel, aren't I? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Welcome. That ought to teach you not to be such a city slicker. Mm -hmm. I'm here to investigate an incident at the Scoggins Eraser Factory. Not an incident, you know a clusterfuck. About it? No. The hotel's going to close soon. Better check in if you're sneaking around. Translation, fuck off, I don't want to talk to you. Seen any suspicious people hanging around the hotel lately? Yep. Really? Can you describe them? Skinny. Asks lots of questions. Wears a stupid hat. Thanks for the tip. Yep. Again, translation, fuck off, I don't want to talk to you, and you're ugly. <laughs> I love the way he's just walking away from, the, from him. There's like, no. Discovered a fence. Boards all chewed up something terrible. Could be the work of strays trying to get to the dumpsters back there. I don't know why I'm reporting this. Oh, you forgot to say tethers out. Dum dum dum. Oh yes, the gum, because nothing helps people concentrate as already chewed gum does. Well, hello. let's start talking to her. Hello there, mister. Welcome to Valda's Inn. I'm Martha Garrett, but everyone calls me Ma. How can I help you? I'm Nelson Tethers. Okay, this have may have been totally missed on oh, me, yeah, but who the hell is Valda? The eraser factory, eh? We're awfully excited to have a real FBI man in our town. <laughs> Just like TV, yeah? Ooh, I'm gonna make some hot dish for you later. A uh, hot dish? 
I've always it. thought that sounded like a metaphor for sex. Some hot dish. So, uh, what mm. room am I in? Yeah, okay, I've got your room right here. Oh dear, this is so embarrassing. The night clerk wrote down your room number in code. Hmm. Mind if I have a look? I bet I can figure out what room I'm in. See, this puzzle always bugs me because what else is this than nine? I was like, what sort of bad code is this? Okay, please, if, if I post this on YouTube and anybody actually watches it, could you in the comments just say if you can see anything else but nine there or squiggly lines? Because I'm, I'm curious. It's just weird. And again, seventy-five and a half thousand dollars to figure out that, that was nine. Woo. Again, this top agent doesn't feel that satisfying. I'm, I'm gonna press the how just because I want to. The key to solving this puzzle is seeing what is written in the negative space between the squiggly. Oh God! Again, please, if you like, if you can't solve that just on the face of it, pl please tell me. There you go, Mrs. Garrett. Oh my God! Now I see. Okay then, here's your room key, FBI man. Nice to know that retarded people can run hotels. Thanks. Actually, while I have you here, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Real quick, I promise. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah. I am sort of Scandinavian and German. Oh yeah. How do I get to the factory from here? Hot dish me. Oh yeah. I doesn't know where the factory is. Oh dear, our moose is cooked. Rest assured, <laughs> ma'am, the FBI just likes to confirm intelligence with civilian knowledge of we like to double check things oh of course well it's easy i have a tourist map of our little town of scoggins right here scoggins you know <laughs> our scoggins erasers is the plant that supplies the white house with all of its erasers the president could be fixing a mistake with a scoggins eraser right now Yes, ma'am. And again, why I'm spoken here. like a true European, yeah, the, the American president doesn't fix the mistakes. Made an inquiry into the situation, all we ever got back were bizarre puzzles. Which cost seventy-five yeah, and a half well, thousand each happen. to fix. Well, that will happen. What? Do you know anything about the problem at the factory? Yeah, so tragic about the accident, huh? Accident. <laughs> oh, yeah, the foreman, Isaac Davner, they say he was killed in there. Is that so? Well, not to be gossipy, but I heard the accident was caused by raccoons. Raccoons? <laughs> yeah, little creatures that live in the woods around the factory. Maybe you yes, should go talk to Sheriff Bog about it, though. You should be able to catch him out by the factory right now. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Little creatures that live in the woods, you say. The guy in the lobby, is he okay? Oh, that's Bo Murphy. He's always been a bit of an odd one. He's so yeah, weird, he and it, it's like one of my favorite characters. He mostly keeps to himself, and I bring him some food from time to time. Sometimes I swear he'd starve to death if I didn't bring him something to eat. See, this is another thing why I think hot dish is a metaphor for sex, because she brings him food, but you get hot dish. Mmm. Well, goodbye. Enjoy your stay. Oh, that reminds me. Do you have any gum for sale? Or know where I can buy some? Dear, we've been out of gum for quite some time. What? Haven't seen a stick in months anywhere in town. We tend to get shipments of things like that in the spring. So, no gum? Nope. Gum helps me concentrate. <laughs> that just sounds like a guy who's detoxing. And again, like picking up gum from like a front desk he, he should end this game by dying from something just said look you you junkie you and I'm a smoker I can't tell people they're junkies any kind of gum really because there's lots of like trees outside you just go get some resin during a sticky puzzle excuse me you look Perplexed. Puzzles. So many puzzles. Puzzles? I might be able to help you with that. 
Bo has swallowed a rubber band again. That will happen. His x-rays show only tape tapeworms. Okay, rotate segments of the pesky parasites to the re reveal the hidden object. Tapeworms? Really? Okay, then. Um, that's totally normal, I guess. Coffity, cough, cough, cough. Uh, okay, a double-headed tapeworm. <laughs> Didn't know they could do that. Crafty little bastards. And here we have our rubber band. Maybe I should just do this as a walk as a walkthrough instead. Submit. Seventy-five and a half thousand to figure out if a guy has rubber bands and tapeworms. And apparently he does. Tapeworm twister. That just sounds like a horrible, horrible like child prank thing or something. Salt. Now maybe you can relax a little. With the uh, whispers. It's an acrostical enigma. Maybe it's a Baltimore trans deletion. The whispers? Or not? Great voice acting. He creeps the shit out of me, in other words. Well, let's see what's out here. Dum dum dum. Hmm. Someone left a screwdriver in the alley beside the hotel. Looks clean. Probably of no consequence. Sounds like the voice actor here had a contract for so many lines. Winner undeclared in local contest. Whenever a girl lays on wrestling turns over and the judge missed it. <laughs> You'd think they'd wait for him. Read the four statements and help him determine the winner. Oh god, I hate these. Um Okay, outmatch by the wrestling fat one for Okay, so basically these two lost, which means these two were the winners. And since she lost to the Grizzly Grip and she won to the Grizzly Grip, that means she was against her who had the Grizzly Grip and she won over her. Okay, so to reiterate, these two admit to defeat since it's only four people and they have to start at, like they're doing elimination thing. They, these two must have been against these two somehow and lost to these two and she lost to the grizzly grip which means she lost to one of these two who has a grizzly grip she won over the grizzly grip which means she has a grizzly grip and she beat her her grizzly grip grizzly I love saying grizzly grip grizzly grip grizzly grip now Alex for 75 and a half thousand what is the grizzly grip Top agent! Well, let's see if they have the same reasoning as me. A four-person tournament means there was three matches. In the first two matches, two competitors were eliminated. In the final match, two winners faced off, and the winner of that champion... of that was the champion. Flo, the wielder of the Grizzly Grip, won one match and lost another. That's only possible if she won her first match, proceeded to the final match, and lost. The woman who beat the Grizzly Grip is the winner. I am awesome! Bow before me, puny mortals. That was a tricky one. Oh, I feel arrogant laughing at that. Ooh, a puzzle. Well, these are interesting. Involving gnomes. Those are Scoggins gnomes. All the tourists love them. But I think one has gone missing. I swear, I had six of them. I took a picture when I set it up, but I guess I lost it. I still have the film negative, though. Uh, ceramic gnome has disappeared from the hotel display, which we're not going to find the gnome in Martha's photo, name, but it doesn't appear in the display. I love the way they're standing, I just feel like humming da 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 Okay, in the negative, the colors are reversed. So, let's see, what do we have? Good place to st three red hats, that means there should be three green hats. Yeah. Okay, there's only two green, which means it's one of the red hats that's wrong. Uh, let's see the facing of them. So, red hats, 
green shirts, they all have that, yeah, okay. Um, one of them faces the wrong way, apparently. Uh, let's see, let's see. Looking away from his hand, or looking towards his hand? That's raised. I have one looking away, one looking towards... I have two looking towards the hand here. Oh, and one good little hint, which I remember because I failed this puzzle miserably once, is that the text down here is backwards because it's mirrored. So, when this one is looking at his hand and facing to the right, that means he's looking at his hand and facing to the left on the negative. So this one is our gnome. And if I'm wrong about this, damn you, YouTube! 75 and a half thousand. Dum dum dum. Woohoo! Negative gnomes. Oh yes, I said it. Top agent. Oh yeah.